Hi everyone, we're just gonna give people a few more minutes to hop on here and then I will share my screen and we'll get going. But um, I just wanted to tell you where we're at since it's 11.58, we're gonna let everybody make sure that they get on here right around noon and, and then we'll get rolling. But thanks for your patience as we um, get ready to go. And, and just so you know, we will be sharing our a screen so that you can see the presentation um, as we talk. All right, we'll get started. <clears throat> Welcome. Thanks for joining us to the updated graduation requirements for the class of 2023 and beyond. Um, the information we're going to present to you today is the information that we have based on our current understanding of what is currently being um, shared by the Ohio Department of Education. This is a visual overview of the graduation requirements and the changes. You can find that on the counselor's website as well as the district website. Um, basically the changes are indicating that um, they're breaking it into three components. They have the covering the basics, which are those skills to earn the 20 credits for graduation, a demonstration or showing competency in English and math, and then demonstrating readiness in uh, two or more seals. And we'll go over the details of those now. The first being the 20 credits. This has not changed. So if you have older students in your family, this part of the requirements has not changed. Demonstrating those skills and earning those 20 credits. The breakdown are four credits of English, four credits of math, three of science, three of social studies, a half credit of health, and then a half credit of physical education. If students take that during the school year, during the academic year, it's actually two of our PE classes. Um, and then students have an opportunity to have that waived if they participate in two seasons of a sport. Then there's five elective credits that students have to earn. Um, anything above and beyond those core credits that I just listed do fall into the category of five elective credits. 
Um, so if you take five Englishes or four social studies, um, those go into the elective credits. And then the areas of um, foreign language, business, technology, art, um, all of those also are part of the five elective credits that a student needs to earn. If a student does use the PE waiver to earn credits uh, or to meet their PE requirements, there is an additional 0.5 credits in the elective field that they use to reach that total credit. And then there is a financial literacy requirement. Um, students need to earn um, 0.5 of financial literacy at some point in high school. Uh, the courses we have for students to earn it is personal financial management, which is a business elective, financial algebra, which is a year long math class. Um, students can earn it also through IB courses in IB history or IB um, business. Um, and then there is a full year requirement of fine arts completed in grades seven through 12. Um, and if the students take those fine arts in seventh and eighth grade, they meet that requirement to graduate, but it does not count in the 20 credits needed in high school. If they take it in grades nine through 12, then it's a credit in high school and it meets the fine, fine art requirement. And then I just remembered, I forgot to mention for financial literacy, the economics class in social studies also meets that financial literacy requirement. And that's how you guys combine it in the four years to earn 20 credits needed. Okay, so hi, I'm Mrs. Mann. We've kind of gone over, Mrs. Laura just went through, you first have to earn those 20 credits. Now, the next component that the state has rolled out for the new graduation requirements is earning competency or showing competency. So students, there's uh, several ways that they can do this, but the first way to show competency is through their score on the end of course test for their English two and math one. Students need to have a score of 684 or higher to have sh shown competency, to have kind of, um, pass that test. And it has to be again in the English two, which for most of our students, they will take at in April of their sophomore year and math one, which again, for most of our students, that will be their freshman year in April of their freshman year. If students do not earn the competency um, the first time they take it, students will be given an, another opportunity after there has been some sort of remediation. The state has ruled out that students can take the test. Um, they take it the first time, they don't earn that 684 score, then remediation will be given to them. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like. We're still ironing out some of the details as a district, but then students will have the opportunity to take the English two and math one test again. If students do not reach that 684 score on the end of course test, there are four different um, ways they can still show competency. So if we've tried the math one and the English two and we don't get that score, then students can show competency by earning a grade um, or earning a credit in a college credit plus class. So that's taking um, a course at the college level and it has to be in either English or math. So they have to take a college credit plus math course or they have to take a college credit plus English course, earn a passing grade, earn credit for that course. And then the state will accept that as yes, they have shown competency in the math and English. Another um, option for students to do if they did not pass their English to math one and of course test with a 684, students can show career readiness. Um, they can do this by earning 12 points in an industry recognized credential. Um, they have to be proficient or higher on three or more web exams. And they also have to have a state issued license for vocation um, or a pre-apprenticeship pre-apprenticeship program. So there is lo loads of information on that specific career readiness qualification all through Ohio Department of Education ODE's website, because um, that can be rigorous to earn those. But if our students are attending DACC, then they have a really good opportunity for how they're going to show their career readiness. Um, the last option that students can use to show competency is military enlistment. So students can enlist in the military, which includes completing the ASVAB test. 
Now, we just um, were informed that Worthington City Schools is offering the ASVAB um, test on January 29th at Thomas Worthington High School. For students who are interested in taking that ASVAB test, we are asking that they um, let their counselor know and then we'll, we'll contact the counselor at Thomas Worthington to let them get them enrolled in that. So four different criteria to show competency, but um, all students are going to try to show competency through that first bullet, the 684 on the math one and English two. Okay. Um, Okay, there are 12 seals. Okay, so we went through, students have to earn 20 credits, check. Then they have to show competency. And I just explained how they can show competency. The last criteria is students have to earn two seals. There are nine state seals that the state is rolling out and there are three local seals that Worthington has rolled out. When students are earning those two seals, at least one needs to be a state seal. Okay, um, so here, if we click on state seals, I'm gonna be doing a deeper dive into like some more details about some of these state and local seals. Um, so as we wait for that link, to load, it's going to take us to our super rich, amazing resource, our counselor website, um, where it lists all of the seals. So we heard nine state um, and three local. And um, so when you see this page, it hasn't quite popped up. So Brian, I don't know if it's popped up on your screen and it's just not sharing. Um, but once we see that, you'll see that um, each seal will be represented by an image. Um, and then you can click on that image to see further details about each seal, because there are a lot, there are 12. Um, for time purposes, I won't go through every single one of them, um, but we will take a deeper dive into the science seal here. So if you click on the science seal, it'll pop up with what your student will need to do to earn that seal. So um, here is the list of this, the different ways to earn the science seal. They just need to complete one of these bullet points. Um, and likely the most common way that they will earn this science seal is to earn a three or higher on the biology end of course exam um, that many of our sophomores will be taking this spring. Then we go back, um, we'll take another deeper dive into one. So we'll take a look at the citizenship seal right next to it. Um, <clears throat> And excuse me, here is a list of the ways to earn the citizenship seal. Again, the primary way that students um, can earn the citizenship seal that will likely happen is earning a three or higher on both the US history and government. So for science, it was just that biology um, end of course exam. For citizenship, it's on two end of course exams, the US history and the government. And then next, we'll take a look at our local seals. So there are three local seals. Um, and again, for time purposes, we'll take a look at one of them. So we'll take a look at the student engagement um, seal. So for your student to earn the student engagement seal, um, they must complete two of these options in any combination. So if they're part of a sport, if they're part of marching band, cheerleading, um, that is one option, just one season of any sport, band, or cheerleading. Um, if they take part in a play or a musical, that would be one, um, or any kind of like club, school-sponsored like um, activity, so school, uh, School student council, um, all of our various clubs, um, e-games or e-sports, there are a lot of them. So one year of that. So they could do, to earn two of them, they could do two seasons of the same sport. They could do a season of a sport and, you know, take part in a play. Um, so any combination, just as long as they have two. Um, and then just to reiterate, students must earn one state seal um, and then the other seal can be either local or state. <clears throat> okay, sorry about that um, confusion that it didn't switch to the website when um, the link went there. But then here, you know, the question you all are probably sitting there thinking is, oh my goodness, this is so much to keep straight. Where does my child stand? And 
Computer Services is working to give you access to their graduation summary sheets. And this um, image down here with the red circle around it is going to show you when you log into the portal, you have different um, things that you can access on the Worthington website. So when you log in as a parent, one of the tabs that you have um, gives you the opportunity to look at your student's graduation status. And when you look at that student graduation status, what it's going to pull up are sheets that look like these two other pictures on the on the um, side of the page. Um, but before I start talking about a little bit of the things I want to draw your attention to on those sheets is I do want to point out that computer services is running into some glitches that they're still working out on you guys actually getting access to those um, sheets directly right now. So for the current moment, um, you do still have to reach out to us. We can download this sheet and send it back out to you as a PDF. Um, but I want you to understand what you're looking at. So um, I pulled a, an example of a freshman student. That's the top one. And you'll notice that you can see all of the earned, the what's in progress, the total, and how much is required. So you can see that progress towards the academic aspect. You can see down beneath that they have information about whether or not they're doing the, P they've qualified already for the PE waiver, if they've met the financial um, art, fine arts requirement, if they've met the financial literacy requirement. But then over on the right-hand side is the area where it talks about the competency. So it shows the scores for the math one and English two. And you can see on the top one, there's no scores listed because that freshman student hasn't yet taken the math one test or the English two test. The version on the bottom does show that information and it shows that the student earned. So for math one, they have a score of a four. So the current juniors, when they were, when they have taken the test, um, for the kids that took that test, um, when we were remote and therefore didn't actually have to take an actual test and their grade got substituted, you won't see a specific score, but if they have a three, four, or five, that means they've met the requirement. So when you see a specific number, you're looking for the number of 684 or higher. If you see like a single digit code of a, you, if it says a one, two, three, four, or five, you'd be looking for a three, four, or five. Up in the blue section above that, it will say competency not yet demonstrated or demonstrated competency in math and English. So that's how you'll get that second piece. You'll get that information about whether or not the second piece has been fulfilled yet or not. And then the seals. You can see on the student, on the, the freshman student, of course, freshmen haven't yet had that chance to be able to complete two seasons of sports or um, participate in two years of a club or activity to be able to earn a seal. Um, so you will see typically for freshmen, you're going to see no seals for that section. But as you can look down at the junior, you can see that that student in, that is shown there has a science seal and the student engagement seal. So that student has met their competency standards, they've demonstrated the competency, and they've met their state seal standards. And so the only thing they have left to worry about is taking care of their, according to the chart, they need to finish their financial literacy requirements and finish those academic credits. And that's what they will do in order to meet those graduation requirements um, and be able to graduate on time, which is the goal for everyone. And obviously the state um, has been working on revising, changing. And so it's a it's a major work in progress for a lot of this. So we know that there are definitely going to be questions. And so we want the chance to be able to answer as many of your questions on here today. Um, but I will say that um, all of this is based upon our current understanding at this moment with all the information that the Ohio Department of Education has shared with us. So if you have questions, it's because it gets hard when people are trying to talk over top of one another, we're going to ask you to use the chat feature down. Um, hopefully you can you can see the chat option down in your on your screen. And if you have questions, if you'll type them in there and then the counselors will read the questions out loud and one of us will answer them um, for everyone so that you can get that information that you want. So does anybody have any questions for us? We know that this is, you know, sometimes when this is your first child going through, the new changes don't mean anything different for you because this is all you've known. And for some of you, this is a totally new ball game because you've never had to hear about competency scores or seals and, um, 
and, and things like that. So um, we wanted to make sure that we're, we're giving you all the information that we can. So we just had a question come through. Um, can the parent not able to attend view this session later? Um, so this is being recorded. So we will, um, Brianna is very diligent about getting this posted on the counselor website. Um, so that will be linked on our website on the homepage for you to access at any time. And we'll have both the video as well as just the slideshow posted on the website. Um, another question says, if an EPP student took math one as an eighth grader, will they have met the math one competency? They will so be, oh, go ahead, Molly. You know, I was gonna say, assuming that they received a confidence score of three, four or five or the 684 or higher, then yes, that will be indicated um, that they have met that part. And even when our eighth graders take math one um, as, you know, they're an accelerated or gifted student, they are uh, expected to take that end of course exam in April. So if an eighth grader is taking the math one and they scored the 684 or higher or the grade conversion, your bells are ringing here, um, then yes, then they have met that math one competency. The other thing I want to clarify um, for everybody is that these new graduation requirements with the seals are actually for the students in the class of 2023 and beyond. So I should have clarified that at the beginning that the students that are current seniors, they're not going to have seals on their transcripts because or on their graduation status sheets um, because they are not under the same graduation requirements. They have a different set of requirements um, that includes those end of course tests um, and getting 18 points. Okay, it looks like another question. Sorry, my scrolling feature is not very good. Okay, do you know if a child with an IEP has accommodations for graduation? Yes, so the current understanding is that uh, they, they do have graduation uh, requirements that are the same for the students. So they have the 20 credits demonstration of competency and the, the readiness, um, which is the SEALs. Currently there are um, there is not details from ODE about alternative ways to earn the SEALs. So currently students with IEPs have to earn the SEALs um, without any um, accommodations or alternative pathways for that. Um, the English and the math there are currently uh, the accommodations components that uh, IEP, students on IEPs have, but for the SEALs, there are none at this point. Thank you so much. This was really very informative. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. This always is a great way to get information out. So we appreciate you being here. Um, we did just get another question. Is there a way to access the student graduation status on the portal prior to senior year? On the per portal, it... Yeah currently states graduation status is only available for high school students in grade 12. So that's a, that's where that computer services um, challenge is coming in. So they're um, having a hard time getting both um, reports because it's two separate graduation pieces to run at the same time. So right now, um, until they get that little glitch fixed, um, you have to ask us and we can send them to you. Like we can download it as a PDF and email it back out to you. Um, you can't currently access it through the portal, but I know they're literally working on that currently to try and get it up and running for you guys. Um, hopefully before the kids will start um, registration in a couple of weeks here. It's my Janet, hope. I'll email it to you. If we want to request that, who, who should we reach out to? Your student's counselor. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a few more minutes here. And if you have other questions, we are happy to answer them. Our goal with the Lunch and Learns, we're doing one each quarter, is always to try and give a quick 
highlight of a specific topic that we think would be helpful and interesting to you, answer any of your questions, and then let you go about your day. Um, I will give a little plug out for the fourth quarter topic um, is going to be on March 25th. Again, it'll be a Zoom. It'll be over um, at noon again. And it will, the topic for that one is what do I do if my child is getting a D or an F in a class? And, you know, what, what steps should I be taking and, and how can I be helping? So there, it looks like a question came in of, is there a deadline for SEALs requirement before graduation? So um, students will have all four years to be able to earn those two SEALs. And, um, and again, we've got through graduation to be able to make that happen. Um, they have to have two SEALs in order to actually graduate though. And we, the counselors are preparing to sit down one-on-one -on -one with all of our students in the month of February for registration. We block off a little bit more time for our juniors. So we are going to be going through this in depth with our juniors about these are the graduation requirements. Here's where you currently stand. If they haven't earned any seals or if they only have one seal, they still need another. We are brainstorming with them a plan. Um, so all of our juniors will know this information, but we are trying to get this information out to the parents as well. So we really appreciate you being here. Sorry that you can also hear the bells in the school. Carol, how much do you miss those bells? <laughs> I don't miss them. <laughs> I just miss the kids and, and all of you. Oh, we miss you too, Carol. I appreciate it. Um, there was another question about um, whether or not the DACC counselors meet with juniors too. Um, and I, they do work with them. I don't, and they are definitely looking at all of these um, graduation requirements, be, especially with the competency piece, because so many of their students are going to work towards the competency demonstrated through career readiness. And um, that's a really great opportunity for the students up there. Um, and then particularly, um, like we'll still meet and we're still checking them too. So even if it's a full day career center student, we're still trying to um, watch and check that as well. There was another question that came in. If my child is interested in playing a sport in college, is there a specific counselor to work with or just the assigned counselor? Um, so we would recommend that your child just work with their assigned counselor to go over those NCAA requirements. All right. Well, it is 1225. So you actually get five minutes to enjoy a lunch without us talking at you. Um, but again, thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Shoot us an email if you want us to send you um, the graduation um, status sheet. And we're happy to do that. And we're thankful that you would take the time to join us today. And we hope that we see you on March 25th. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Enjoy your day. Great scene, everybody. You too, Carol. Thank you. Maddie's doing great. She is, yeah. And I'm recording this just so you are careful about anything else you're still saying, because I, <laughs> until this ends, it doesn't, it doesn't stop That's recording, fine. so just so you know that. That's fine. All right. Thanks again, everybody.